Hey guys, D Mike here for another episode of Pokemon Brilliant Diamond. We dispatched the leadership of Team Galactic last time as they attempted to use the red chain to bind Dialga and force it to come out of hiding. And now we're apparently supposed to be the ones to calm it down. It's like when you're at work and you got an employee who just creates a lot of ruckus and problems, maybe a coworker of sorts that's known for being the bit of the belligerent type. And then you have to put out the fire. So here we go, everybody. Make sure you're ready. Dialga, just a heads up, is a steel and dragon type Pokemon. So it's weak to fighting and ground only. So we're going to start out with our boy Charlie. So here's the loadout for the team that's going to face Dialga. I mixed it up a little bit, not a ton. So we'll see how it goes. Also, I believe it's considered daytime. I mean, the clock is set to daytime. And the spear pillar looks like it's daytime based on, you know, just using your eyeballs. So I don't think dusk balls will be too effective. I don't really have a ton of ultra balls and I can't go anywhere. The game will not let you go anywhere. So hopefully you prepared. But anyway, enjoy this. Enjoy the legendary theme of Pokemon Diamond. It's wonderful. Okay. I don't really know remember what level Dialga is, so this could be a problem. Give it your best shot, Charlie. Alright, so Dialga, ooh, 47, that's very random. Dialga is going to start out with using a um, pressure, that's its ability. And pressure just means that every time that you use a move, you'll use it twice. Oh, okay, was not expecting that to happen at all. Oh, it's, so here's its signature move, Roar of Time. This fucking hurt a lot. Okay, yes. Yes, it does. That was super uncool. I think it's a Dragon-type move. You can run from this fight. Okay, well, we're not going to do that. Actually, I'm a little bit of afraid. I thought that Diago would be able to tank that hit a little bit better. So now I'm kind of afraid of using anything else that's going to potentially kill it. Now, I do know that in the case of these kind of story-driven legendary fights that typically the Pokemon in question that you're trying to fight has a higher catch rate than normally would. So like just for fun, this is probably not going to work, but uh, let's see what a Dusk Ball can do. It looks like it's nighttime outside, but I'm not entirely sure kind of temporarily what's going on. It's probably not gonna work at all, but yeah. So, you know, we'll just have to keep at it. Oh, it also knows Ancient Power. Do you have an Ancient Power fight? That'd be fun. Yes, so I'm just going to keep Samuel here to tank some hits and throw some throw some balls. Not sure how well this is going to go, but... I have a bunch of Dusk Balls and not a whole lot of anything else because I thought that we would be fighting Dialga at nighttime, and I was wrong, so... Samuel seems like the perfect tank, unless it uses Roar of Time, which is going to uh, clap our cheeks, and we don't want that, so... We'll have to do a little bit more damage. The only thing I'm afraid of is how much damage we can sustain doing to Dialga. Okay, so that was very uncool. Yes, I don't want to run. I actually want to make this happen. It's got some moves that are pretty good that will uh, put put some hurting on my, on my Pokemon here. The background's very strange looking. Okay, um... What can we do that will not greatly hurt this Dialga? Maybe a Rock Tomb? One of the nice things, the saving graces of, of Roar of Time, is that it is kind of like a Hyper Beam type move, where every time that it uses it, it's going to need a recharge turn. Recharge turn, so. All right, so we've got it down into the red here. That was a crit, I was not expecting that. It lowers its speed. Not that that matters, because at this point, I'm not going to really attack it anymore. Look at that big old face smiling like a donut. Wow. That did a ton of damage for an ancient power. was not expecting that. I want Samuel to be kicking at the end of this one, because I want all my Pokemon to get some experience. Please stop. If you could just stop attacking me, that would be very cool. Aw, you're making Craig cry. An ancient Pokemon fighting a legendary Pokemon. Why can't we all just get along? I don't really know if any of these dust balls are going to work. But, you know. 
We got two shakes. That's pretty good. Two shakes of a lamb's tail and no slash. It's very strange. Let's go ahead and uh, cheer Craig up with a nice warm glass of milk. That should do it. At this point, it's just kind of a war of attrition to see if you can hang in there as long as it takes to catch it. I don't know what the catch rate is for Dialga in this game. It's probably different depending upon what game you play, but thankfully it only has so many ancient powers. I'll try another, another ball. We'll just keep hacking away. I don't really have anything to, um, I don't know how many status effect moves. The only one who would would have been Bart and that would have just been a uh, stun spore. So I guess bringing Bart would have been smart, but you know, smart part. We didn't do that, so we are living through the error of our ways. Hopefully this dialogue can stop busting out of busting out of my balls. Not a fan of that. Okay, Craig, you're about to You're about to take a seat there, bud. It seemed like Samuel was actually one of the best choices for just kind of hanging in there. Samuel's pretty pretty thick. Not really weak to most of the stuff that Diago's trying to toss our way. So we'll go ahead and revive Craig. This is kind of pointless, to be honest, but you know what? At this at this juncture, I have a million billion Poke Dollars, so it's not like it really matters to me. That makes me sound so entitled. Like, you Silver Spoon Pokemon trainer. Thinking you can just blow your money on all kinds of nuptials and whatever things you're into and whatever. All right, Dialga, if you could go ahead and just uh, quit, that would be sweet. Do I have anything that's like a stronger, do I have any uh, hyper potions? Do I have those? But I don't. Was never gifted one. I've talked a lot of smack about him as I'm buying this milk, so I guess the game is just not going to help me out. How about that background though, huh? It's kind of cool. Looks like when you're playing around in like maybe Microsoft Paint and just having some fun. My main fear is that we're going to wind up stalling this Dialga long enough that it's going to kill itself using Struggle, which would be really unfortunate. We prefer not to do that. We just like it to stay in the ball, please. Okay, great. I'm not entirely sure what an Ultra Ball versus a Dusk Ball does if it's not at like nighttime. Let's just try Ultra Ball real quick and see if that gets it. I still think the idea of being able to capture a legendary Pokemon inside of a Pokeball is a little bit uh, strange. Okay, I'm getting to the point where I think reviving my Pokemon is actually a waste. I should just be throwing Pokeballs every turn if I can. Or else how is Dialga gonna know who's boss? Okay, so we're just gonna Use the Dusk Balls. I think we had a little bit more success. We did get three shakes with the Dusk Ball. So, you know, it's just a matter of time. When those crazy numbers under the cover of the game, those RNGs, the random number generators, all line up in harmony and just let me have this, that would be wonderful. We did get three shakes. That's pretty good. I don't have the ability to really... Um, I don't have the ability to really uh, damage it more. There's not, I don't really think I have any moves that are just weak enough that it wouldn't knock it out right away. I thought Dialga was gonna be a lot higher of a, a number in level, but it is not. 47 seems a bit random and underwhelming kind of. So we're just gonna keep going here. Um, Hopefully I have enough Dust Balls. I actually bought them, not for this purpose, I bought them for another purpose of Pokemon catching, obviously. But it was also gonna be a legend, ooh boy. I'm gonna bring them for another legendary experience. Man, he is just chewing through, he, it. It is just chewing through my team right now. Am I gonna have anybody alive to witness me catching Diago? We will find out. But once again, the game has kind of locked you into this area. You can't leave, you can't fly away, so you basically either have to catch Dialga and, you know, obviously you'll want to save before you do that. So either you're catching Dialga, or you can run. I mean, you don't have to. But I think it's fun to at least make an attempt. Might as well. I really can't do any more damage to it, though, so I don't really... I don't know. 
I guess I just gotta keep reviving my Pokemon and hope that one of them will survive long enough. It does give you the kind of the grace period here of when it uh, when it is knocked out and it uses the roar of time. You know, you do have the ability to you get a free turn basically. In which case, I'm probably just gonna continue to revive Samuel. It seems like Samuel's kind of our best bet to survive. So there we go. Charlie might become the next victim here unless this Pokeball goes well. I just love how we're just so charismatic and like, you know, just kind of chilling. We're so pumped that we're just throwing Pokeballs at this legendary Pokemon. You know, we're not terrified. We're not hiding away. It's just the same. If we were just trying to catch a Starly or a Bidoof, you know, we're treating it kind of the same exact way. And I appreciate that about our character, you know? We're just so pumped about it. We're like, you know what? Regular Pokemon, legendary Pokemon, it doesn't make a difference. Okay, these Pokeballs are not going down well. We have not had a, uh, we've not had a successful shake in a moment, so this is not great. Probably could have done more to weaken it, but you know. I wasn't expecting that initial flamethrower to do so much damage, so there's that. Yeah, it's not even shaking now. I'm getting a little bit, a little perturbed here. Hang in there, Samuel. I guess we'll give you another glass of malk here to keep you hanging around. We're burning through all of our delicious dairy products. Did not use, okay. This move set doesn't really feel like it's great. Like, Roar of Time is cool, and uh, you know, Flash Cannon is whatever, but, you know, I'd expected more out of something like this. Ugh, but apparently, it doesn't matter because this Dialga is one pain in the buns. He just does not want to go in my balls, and I just can't stand that. Come on. It doesn't matter how many it takes, because at the end of the day, it just takes one here. Ugh, there we go. We almost had it. Did you see that, everybody? Of course you did can't look away. This is such a pivotal moment in D-Mike plays. Oh boy. Alright, so another milk should do it. I could max potion, but I don't want to waste it. Saving that for the Elite Four. Maybe I'll just never use it. You know, you ever get to that point when you're playing a video game and you have all those really fancy items? The ones that are supposed to be, you know, to give you an edge against some of the fiercest enemies you'll fight and then you just never wind up using them. That happens to me a lot. I'll get to that point and I look back, I'm like, oh yeah, I had an entire inventory of wonderful goodies that I could have used and I didn't. Alright. This is some scintillating content. Hopefully you all are enjoying this. We are really just crushing it right now in this Dialga fight. Just drinking milk and throwing balls as you should when you're coming up against the deity of time. You know? What else is there to do? I can... I'm just trying to think about, like, the absurdity of that. It's like, you know, Diago has been called from the brink of time or wherever the heck it is. And, you know, we're just sitting there with our team of, like, whatever Pokemon. We're just, you know, pouring milk on them. And we're... <laughs> and we're trying to just... catch it in these Pokeballs. Very happily trying to catch it in these Pokeballs, mind you. Look at that, look at, look at how ecstatic we are. We are absolutely smiling like a donut every time that we throw a Pokeball. But yeah, once again, my fear is just that Dialga is going to eventually run out of moves and then self-sacrifice, which wouldn't be cool because I want to catch it. Every time I think of Dialga and I look at it, doesn't it kind of remind you? I don't know if anybody watched Dragon Ball Z when they were a child. I did, I was a connoisseur of said show. Doesn't it kind of look like uh, one of those phases of Frieza? Like the third phase of Frieza, I think that's what it was when its head was like really long and kind of goofy looking. That's kind of how I feel. All right, can you just, can you just do it? Can you just get in there for me? I don't know how, what kind of coaxing I need to do to get you to stick around in there. Okay. So I guess I could have let Samuel uh, stick around. But I made a goof and I didn't heal up in time, so whoops. 
Worst case scenario, if this doesn't work out, then I'll just, uh... I'll just show you the successful attempt. This is not looking good. We have one more shot. And yeah, if this doesn't work out, let's cut to... The eventual capture? That's fun, right? Okay. Might bring in another team just to make this easier. Oh darn, okay. Well, you know what? It didn't work out. But I wonder if it can actually cause me to leave. Like, where would I go? Oh, this is how you can get back to the Pokemon Center. Oh, okay. Right. So, that could potentially be a thing where I'm like, hey, I'm going to go and climb all the way back up Mount Cornet, but I'm not going to do that. But what I will do is I'll see you in just a moment. Okay, everybody, so we are back with a little bit of strategy here. I switched things around. I brought in Bard this time to paralyze Dialga and also to flash it in a beautiful way. So that way we did not be able to attack as often and the process will slow it down. I did a bit of a soft reset to get my Dusk Balls back. The only way to really get out of the situation is to essentially black out from Dialga knocking on your Pokemon out as you saw. But now that it's paralyzed and it has flashed, the likelihood of it knocking my team out is a lot lower. So there's less risk involved in it being paralyzed with that little sliver of health. Hopefully will be enough to do the difference before I didn't have a status effect. And that obviously does increase your chances of catching a Pokemon. I was being a little bit of a, of a turd burglar and trying to brute force it. But as you can see, the multiple flashes, I use six of them to lower its accuracy to rock bottom. And the paralysis hopefully will help, but it seems like the Pokeballs themselves aren't really doing too much. We did get the three shakes the one time, though, so that's pretty cool. I don't want this entire video just to be this Diago fight, but... <laughs> we'll see how it goes, unfortunately. Oh, there it goes. That's the first move it's gotten off in a while. But Samuel's a good choice to weather the storm here feeling pretty good about it you know we've got things much more in our favor this time around we just needed to stick in the stick in the ball it's all we need just go to your home inside the dusk ball dialogue that's all you have to do i would just like it to you know i want the game to tease me a little bit more you know give me a little bit of a, a little bit of a belief that it's actually going to happen we'll use our let's go ahead and used through these Ultra Balls. I actually grabbed these uh, just randomly throughout the game. I've never bought any, but, you know. Wind and Spear Pillar, you know, might as well use your Ultra Balls. I don't really foresee myself going about catching too many more Pokemon, so... Besides, you know, I do actually do plan on I probably will go and catch the... If there are, I don't know. Oops. I actually will probably go through and try to catch the various potential legendaries presented in this game. I don't know how many of them there are, or, you know, how, how big, big of a part of the Let's Play that will actually wind up being. But, you know, I, I still want to I still want to have some fun with that. Catching the legendaries is neat. And I made an entire PC box for that, so I gotta... I have to do my part with due diligence and, uh, you know... All right, so let's go back to Dusk Balls. I'm not playing the game at night, and it, apparently the background of where I'm fighting it is not nighttime either, so these are kind of a waste. I don't actually know, I was gonna say this earlier, I don't know the legitimacy of Dusk Balls if you're not using them in their proper context. It could just be no better than a Pokeball or a Great Ball, I don't know. But I will say is that Dialga is very annoying. I don't know what Pokemon game it is. I want to say black and white, where you are kind of put into a similar situation where you have to catch the the cover art legendary. And I remember that being very easy. Like, this this seems to be trickier than I was hoping it would be. Um, you know, we got close with the three shakes the one time, and then ever since that moment, we haven't really had much of a shot, which is a little annoying. I would like it to just cooperate. I can't really do any more to it. Like, I've already knocked its health down to a sliver and uh, you know we've done our part to put Dialga in its place but it just does not want to stay there it's 
a bit stubborn. Maybe Diago is a, is a bit of a teenager, you know, doesn't want to follow by the rules, wants to do its own thing, you know, just wants to hang out with its buddies on instant messenger, vaping and playing with their fidget spinner. You know what kids like to do these days, of course. That's exactly it. What? I just wish the game would give me more of those. Like, I understand that it's not meant to be easy, obviously. You're trying to catch a legendary Pokemon, but at the very least, like, throw me a bone here. Oops. Eh, I guess we could use more, one more milk. Or as many milks as it takes before I catch Dialga. Yeah, this, uh, this episode was not meant to just be this. Also, Dialga's been pretty lucky fighting through all of these flashes that I did. I flashed it pretty hard. So, I don't want to hear it from Dialga over here. Yeah, the, uh, the single burst when it busts out it doesn't even shake once. It's very disheartening. You know, I'm of the impression that with all the work that I've done, just stay in the ball. Ooh. Guys. We did it. Dago has been caught. Oh, yeah. You betcha. And everybody's alive this time. Look at this. Oh, yeah. Look at that. For having participated in the fight. Bart is on top of the world. Here we go, everybody. Dialga, the temporal Pokemon. Steel Dragon. Holy crap, it's 18 feet tall. Jeez. It has the power to control time. It appears in Sinnoh region myths as an ancient deity. And now it's ours. No. We will not. Name Dialga. Dialga's name is Dialga. You can't change that. Would you rename any deity of whatever various religion you're a part of? No. Also, their eyeballs. What just happened? Thanks. Thanks for watching and not helping me at all. They didn't even offer to heal my Pokemon. Oh, okay. So he is concerned about us and our Pokemon, so he comes out to a place as treacherous as this, but he sends Barry and I to infiltrate terrorist organizations, battle through the blinding snow, Whatever. You're a big old fake, Professor Rowan. I'm on to you. You could have done something and you did nothing. It's like the bystander effect, but you're like, you're supposed to be an authority in the Pokemon world. Is that it? Okay, what else do we do now? Okay, is that... Okay, that's a little uh, anticlimactic. Is there anything back here? Just, no? Just, oh wait, there is. Ooh, added, that's right. So if, don't forget to come back here in the spot where Dialga came from. You'll grab the Adamant Orb, which I believe is a power-up item just for, just for Dialga. It boosts the power of dragon and steel type moves. So there you go, meant for it, obviously. What does it say? Go uh, check up on Sunny Shore City. Okay, are we allowed to even fly there? That's way over here. Okay, I guess we'll make our way over there. Can we not? Oh my gosh. Please don't tell me we have to go all the way back through Mount Coronet. That would be a pain in the buns. Wait a second. I think that if we... If we just get through this little part here, we should be able to... fly away. Oh, it does tell us that the repel's in effect. Okay, game, all right. I'm picking up what you're putting down. I'm smelling what you're stepping in. All right. We like that. That is some quality of life improvement. Actually, I mean, this has probably been in the most recent Pokemon games, or at least the ones from, like, the last decade. So, can we fly now? Can we use that here now? Okay, there we go. So all you have to do is go off the Spear Pillar. That must be a special area that... You can't do much of you on that. Okay, so let's heal our mons real quick. And actually, first order of business, let's go to the PC and check up on our boy Dialga. Oh yeah. There it is. Pretty amazing. Boom. Get out of there, man, if you egg. No one cares about you. Wait, where'd I put, where'd it go? Ooh. Oh, it swapped spots. Oh, I see. I was gonna say, where'd it go? Where'd I do the... All right, so we have Manaphy Egg and Dialga. There are other legendaries that we will come across before this Let's Play is concluded. 
We're gonna make our way to Sunny Shore City, actually. I do believe that there are some fights we can do to conclude this episode. I didn't want it to just be the Dialga fight. That would be really boring. As amazing as it was, and as amazing as we did together, everybody. Without your help, I wouldn't have been able to tackle that nasty Pokemon. So now we can head east from the resort area, if you all remember that. That is... Oh, we can, we can use rock climbing now. We can go up here. What is up here? I don't remember. Kind of rattled the old brainstem here. Ooh, there's a Pokeball. Yes. I don't want any of your nasty Pokemon. We got Roar. Okay, so... That is a whole lot of hype for nothing. I like how we just kind of slide down the rocks on our butt. That's got to hurt. I mean, I guess technically it's on B-Barrel or B-Barrel or whatever its name is. Okay, and I think I remember this is one area that I didn't really explore as much chasing down the Grunt. I don't think there might be a battle or two, which is actually kind of good. I do want to fight someone if I can. That sounds really aggressive. I just want to fight someone. No, I actually do need to get into at least a battle for a reason. You'll see in a moment. This lady is just like spinning around. Look at you. She's just going for it. Yeah, these battles aren't going to amount to anything. Because I'm pretty sure that these trainers are all vastly inferior to us. So, there's, did she just kiss her Pokeball? Where are you putting it? Like, you're swimming. Where do you, where do you put it? Ew. Okay, anyway, so we're just going to try to get these fights over with real quick. The goal of these fights and trying to do this is actually I want to level up for a specific Pokemon on my team that I was struggling to understand why it would not evolve. I'm like, what level does it evolve? Well, it turns out that Raymond, the Pokemon who just leveled up. What is, what is this? No, that sucks. It turns out that Raymond is not a level up Pokemon for evolution. That's not how that works. It turns out that Raymond's evolution is dependent on happiness. And I think after 43 levels of leveling up and fighting together, that should be more than enough for Raymond to be joyous and to ascend to the final level of its evolutionary capabilities. It turns out that is correct. So Maylene needs your heart out. The cute little Riolu now is growing up right before our eyes. I love Riolu, it's a mommy too, Kyle. So there you go, this is one of the pseudo mascots for this generation, Lucario. Pretty dang cool. Lucario is the aura Pokemon and has the ability to sense the auras of all things. It understands human speech. So just like the crazy middle-aged woman from your neighborhood, it also can sense your aura. Heal Pulse. The user emits a healing pulse that restores the target's HP by up to... Okay, so it's just recover. Okay, so attack and... Uh, it's attack and... Ooh, it's special attack is greatly outpaced its attack. I thought it was a mixed attacker. Uh, let's go ahead and get rid of Sword Stance. Heal Pulse sounds kind of neat. I mean, we don't really need recover on a Pokemon. I don't... It's what items are for, but... And once, ooh, and this is its actually its signature move, Aura Sphere. So we have, yeah, see, like that's that's the tricky part is like, I I was teaching it a physical attacking move because I thought I thought that'd be better, but it turns out that the special attacking Aura Sphere is better. It's actually, I believe Aura Sphere was something that Lucario learned and could use in um in Super Smash Brothers. It became a part of the Super Smash Brothers roster, I think, in like Pokemon. After this Pokemon game came out, it was like in uh, Smash Brothers Brawl, I think. So that sounds right. But here we go. We're fighting against another Gyarados. This one's a little bit less scary than the Gyarados that Cyrus used. That one was a bit of a doozy, so that was tough. Unfortunately, I didn't really have too many Pokemon that weren't susceptible to like water or ice moves that could also use a rock move. So 
in the case of Samuel, this works out really well. So we do have ancient power, and now that our special attack has been boosted, this should probably be a one-hit knockout. We'll find out. Ooh, okay, so Gyarados is a thick boy. Gyarados is actually probably one of my favorite Pokemon, and I remember when I was um, younger and I had the cards, the Pokemon cards, and the Pokemon card from like the original set, not the fossil set, but the other one, the one that came before that, it just looked so cool. It had 100 HP, it was a holographic of course, because it's, it's amazing and you know, it was just one of those things that back then, it just felt awesome. And you know, if you got one on in your hands, you know, you just knew you were you were the guy. You know, you were you had it going on. All right. So enough with battles. This will probably. I was only doing these battles because I wanted to evolve Raymond, but I don't have intents on uh, exploring this area because it, it is uh, a big fat nothing burger. So. We fought the spinster there and the random sailor just kind of hanging out on the alcove. So we're done with that. And I believe we can actually come in here and heal ourselves. Okay, so we can't stay the night, but we can take a nap on a cot. Or maybe just sit at the table and doze off. You ever been so tired you fall asleep standing up? No, I guess not standing up, that'd be insane. Sitting up, maybe? So here we go, now we can head east to Route 22. And this is kind of like the, uh, it's kind of the conclusion of the game. This is when things start to get kind of real. I don't even know what's in this grass. Ooh, it's a Mr. Mime. Mr. Mime is incredibly creepy. And it annoys me now, because Mr. Mime used to be just a grass, or not a grass type, wow. Whoops, just a psychic type, but now Mr. Mime is actually a Psychic and fairy type, as if it wasn't already weird enough. Ooh, there's a little bit of grass back there. I wonder what's in that area. Ooh, here's the alternate variant of um, Gastrodon. I almost forgot what it was called. Looks like this one's covered in mustard. Like, yeah. You have a nice ballpark hot dog and you make the cool, fancy, swirly lines on, with the mustard and stuff. You ever do that? No, just me? Okay. You come back here though, you can get yourself a full restore. That's nice. I don't know if there's anything else over here that really matters. I don't know if there's not really anything in particular that I'm looking for in this grass. I mean, there kind of is, but off the top of my head, I don't know if it exists in this area. So I'm not gonna really hunt for it. That's okay. But I might actually postpone that for a moment do the trainer battles that are in this area. Okay, that is not what I expected the camera to do. So yeah, we'll do a, a, few, ba a, few, a few battles here, that's what I just said. We'll do some battles. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to wrap this up before too long on our way to Sunny Shore. Very exciting. We are almost headed to the final gym of the game everybody and then after that it's victory road and the elite four so if you're all ready prepare yourselves i'm not sure how many more episodes there will be in the let's play but you know all the all the requisite things we're expected to do in this game we will be doing there will be some post-game content eventually probably not going to go all out and do like crazy battle towers and contests and stuff like that that's not really something of interest to me but, you know, just kind of the general exploration and if there's any cool areas that get unlocked or if there's any legendaries to chase down, you know, we'll try to do that. Okay, let's actually swap out the team a little bit because this part of the team is doing pretty good. No, we will not be bringing Diago, don't worry about that. Yeah, we don't need to have everybody that was here previously. We can do some swip swap in. As you can tell, some of the team, though, is, you know, we're starting to get to the point where um, the team itself is, like, rounding out in levels. Ooh, that, ooh, Miguel is way up there. Whoa. Yeah, we're rounding out kind of in levels, so it's, like, not really of value to 
to swap them out too much more. I mean, we're getting to the eventual Elite Four equipped team, so just, you know, prepare yourself for that. There's a few few fights along the way. All right, here's some Rule 34. Just kidding. That's disgusting. Yeah, this is uh, one of those Pokemon. Uh, Lopunny, Lopunny, however you say it. Lopunny, Lopunny. That uh, people got a little excited for and got kind of creepy about it. So, if that's something that you do, I uh, usually not very judgmental as a person. I try not to be. But uh, I might poo-poo on that. That's a little strange. And, uh, you know... I mean, if, as long as you're not hurting anybody, but you know, there's a little bit of uh, a little of something to potentially be said about getting uh, getting overindulged with your cartoons. Okay, so this person just gave us the TM for fling. Great! What a great move! Thank you, guy, for handing us garbage. There might be pokeballs over there. Could bite you? Probably a nighttime thing. We'll have to come back. Can you turn around? I'd like to double battle you both to make this quick. I did not consent to you singing to me, so if you could back off with your with your joyous choruses. All right, so let's knock these two out at the same time. Mantike and a Remoraid. I don't remember if this is true, but I think in order to, in like one of the Pokemon games now, or like something like there's like Remoraid that that swim underneath Mantine, and I don't remember if this is a thing or not, but it's like I think that in order to evolve Mantike into Mantine, you have to have like a Remoraid in your party or something like that. I could be completely off base on being remembering something entirely different. I don't know, but that sounds that sounds sort of good. I guess I don't know. But we're just trying to power through these battles. We're just trying to get to Sunny Shore as quickly as we can. I don't have time for this kind of guff getting in the way. These weakling trainers trying to stand in the area of me as an obstacle. Okay. Uh, you know what? Well, it's whatever. We're already pretty fast. I'm just trying to train up the weaklings here. Okay, so we have Dragon Breath, which is special. Our special attack is not good, but our physical attack is wonderful. Back in the day, I'm pretty sure all dragon moves were actually physical. And those Pokemon had stats to back it up, so you definitely want to back, back, back it up. Ah, shoot. For sure. Alright, so that might have been a father and son. Now you can go cry for the rest of your afternoon. Oh no! That's right, hold that inner tube tight. You wouldn't want to drift away. What is this? Who are you? Pokemon, okay, that's weird. Pete, ah oh boy. I don't want to deal with any of this. There's a lot of trainers down there, aren't there? Oh man, I was not gonna... I was not expecting to have this be a uh, fight-a-thon video, but thankfully, Thankfully, these trainers only have one Pokemon at a time, so we're able to blitz through them most of the most of these encounters, which is really nice. Yeah, we'll just use our strongest moves right now as we're trying to spread out the experience. Okay. So Rem Raid is down. So Tuber Holly, done. Not so jolly Holly. Ha, <laughs> got him. I think this is kind of bad that I'm like going the wrong direction. Oh my goodness. Yeah, there's a lot going on here. There's a lot of trainers here. And I think that it'd be best suited if we take on all these fishermen and the others on Route 221, 220 next time. So thanks for watching, everybody. I've been D Mike. This has been Pokemon Brilliant Diamond. I'll see you next time. Bye.